Hi, Ammo. Okay, at long last it is time. This is your father's watch. We have um, a few issues, obviously. Um, the most significant one, of course, is that the your dial feet are broken. That sometimes happens with, with 7000 series watches. Um, finding a replacement dial for this just did not happen. I would have to end up basically buying a whole watch. So we're going to have to explore ways to uh, repair the dial feet to hold the dial in place. Um, and, and that can certainly be done. The bracelet is broken on this side, but this actually isn't the correct bracelet for this model. I'm going to look to see if I can find the correct bracelet in my stuff. It should have these same four line links in the for the middle section. I'll look and see. We're going to have uh, let's see, I haven't let's uh, get that let's, let's get this thing off of here. Come on. Hang on. Okay. <clears throat> Got that off of there. Uh, these are the correct end links, though. It's good that both of them were saved. Uh, we'll see what we can do with that. Want to open up the back here just to make sure that we've got a lot of stuff on here, which sometimes happens with watches. I just like to get it a little clean before I open it up. Get off of there. Because if I'm going to be handling it, obviously we want to minimize the amount of junk that's in there. I should probably get a second glove. Now, well, let me do that. Okay, and we're back. I got this other one off. That will go into the cleaners. I'm gonna, believe me, I'll go over this a lot more intensely um, later on. And it'll go through the cleaner, obviously, and remove this stuff. I just wanna make sure that this is a little cleaned up before I pull the back off of it. Well. Hang on just one second. Okay. Let's get that case back off. Now I noticed yesterday when I was looking at this that it started it started trying to run, so that is a very good sign, obviously. And it's what we expect of Seiko. Seiko tends to run even if in the even after a hard working life, one of the reasons is they have a little more slop in their tolerances, it means that it'll continue to go. A little hazy. We've got a lot of wear on the top of this, this ratchet wheel. And that's been getting worked on by this. First thing looks good. Obviously, it's a runner. That's pretty loose. We'll probably have to replace that winding weight. It's flopping all over the place. And I'll have to look and see what this is. Okay, well, hang on. Anticipated that we would have had as defiant a child as Willow. 
when you're talking in the same voice as, as video Spencer, that okay. I was like, is he talking to me? No, I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. Talking to you. She just doesn't listen. It's insane. No, and she chooses not to listen. She chooses not to listen. Like, she just won't fucking listen. Can you hand me one of those little white paper bags, please? Thank you. I was not like Oh, you Gavolt. What? Nothing. Looking at my lunch, wishing I was eating it. Sorry. No, it's not your fault. It's nothing to do with you. I'm in your space. Obviously, you don't want to eat over your workbench. You want to what? I said I'm in your space. Obviously, you don't want to eat over your workbench. No, I don't. I want to. But it's okay. I took a couple bites. I'm, I'm moving forward. But, you bought six crystals. You know what I wish? That I had this Japanese barbecue sauce. Somebody should have sent you the barbecue sauce. What Japanese barbecue sauce? This one, there was like a watch in it, the original Japanese barbecue sauce. Okay, so I had to do some excavation in order to get to the cutout to remove the chisel. I did that. So this is one of these situations, the same crystal setup as like, um, oh, uh, s uh, a helmet, a number of different crystals like this. The crystal sits on top of a, uh, uh, a half round gasket and then is pressed into place by the bezel. But still though, amazing, huh? Viton, all these years later. There's your glass. Okay, so that's going to go. I'm not going to do anything real funky. I am going to get this into the cleaners and just be happy. Okay. Okay, all that stuff is in the cleaner. 
which is excellent, so you can start to think about things. Let's get this jacked up loose winding bridge off of here. So maybe I can tighten it up, but oops, who knows? Let's see. But first, we clean it. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Now that's a lot of wiggling. A whole lot of wiggling going on. Ditto here. It's rare to see one of these with this much wear, but... Oh, right, you can't let that down while this reduction gear is in place. So, lefty-loosey, because that's got the double, the double, triple cutouts. Which, of course, means it's reverse-threaded. Now... That's good. Look, look at that go. Look at that sucker move around. Yeah, it's rare to see a 7000 series with wear like that, but you know, this watch lived a very long working life. Pretty intense one. So we're gonna have to do something we don't normally do, which is jewel the lower mainspring arbor and the, probably repair the the upper bushing too in the train bridge. I actually have those replacement bushings, um, so that's that's a good thing. Uh, it's amazing. Even the uh, even the balance is like dirty on the edge of the balance there. That's wacky. You don't see that often. I mean hazy, yes, but. Not dirty. I have an answer to the mystery. Okay, hang on just one second, folks. Okay, folks, I finally got the answer to the mystery. Now we know the answer. <laughs> You're like, the answer to what mystery? And the answer, the question is, why can't anybody find Coke Zero? And not that everybody's a Coke, Coca-Cola aficionado, but you can't get, we've noticed... Because Sadie likes a particular kind of Coke Zero, the vanilla, can't find it anywhere. Turns out, Sabrina just found, that because of coronavirus, demand is dropping radically for these things. And they're just generally having supply problems. So they are not making the less popular kinds of sodas. And that includes the Coke Zeros. So if you go to the store and you see they still have a stock of Coke Zero vanilla... Well, it's kind of a getting kind of rare. Anyway, that's the answer to the mystery. I know everybody was wondering about that, and <laughs> now we know. Now we know. I thought it was my imagination. Well, okay. Huh, look at it, how it really doesn't want to turn. Look at that. Isn't that amazing we were able to get it to run. It's, it, like, doesn't want to turn. I wonder if that logo is in here somewhere. Huh. That'd be curious, wouldn't it? That applied logo that went missing off the dial. You never know, because these things, they wiggle around a lot, and you get things... I have to get out my... Wow. Why is that so stiff? That's really strange. Okay, let's see what we see here. Doesn't look so bad inside. It really doesn't. Let's take the auto winder off. There's that. And get that off of there. Oh, 
That's pretty dirty. That's pretty worn. There's a there's a little cam on the bottom of that that moves the moves the pull lever back and forth. Um, might have to replace that. That looks kind of gnarly. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to work on that. All right. So I mean, this looks pretty clean. Isn't it amazing? You see all the wear in this watch, but yet this on the inside, it's looking pretty pretty shiny. Too bad. I don't know why it wouldn't turn. I guess I'll have to flip it over and we'll find out. Alrighty, so got this flipped over just for fun. Here's the inside of the mainspring barrel. It doesn't look bad. A little wear, but not bad. So let's get this off of here. Oh, right. I'm trying to make sure that I've got that in the view of the camera. I want to know if you find the thing in there. Oh, yeah, because one of the applied logos came off. I don't know where it is. Well, it's not under there. Not under there. I don't see it. I don't think it's in the case. I don't know where it was. I don't know what happened with that. How can it just vanish? I don't know. Maybe it got serviced at a certain point, and the and the the the, the that somebody removed that, and it wasn't considered important enough to replace. I don't know. I don't know the answer. I really don't. Okay, on the home stretch, there's your jewel installed for the lower mainspring lever, which is just exactly what we need. Just exactly, exactly what we need. You can see here, these are the broken dial feet. They're still in place uh, where they're being held. I'm going to leave those there for the time being. I'll deal with them when they're clean. Interesting, normally a 7000 series is 100% metal. This one has a Oops. As a plastic intermediary date drag wheel. Neither here nor there. Doesn't really mean much, but it's just interesting. Danny resisted that for a long time. Still pretty clean, all told. Pretty clean, all told. It's a little grody, but that's okay. We expect that, don't we? Hmm. Nope, so no sign of that missing applied logo. Weird. Good amount of wear in your plate right here where the stem was. Things considered, though, it looks pretty good. 
Okay, got to take this uh, down out into the cleaners and get it going. Got a few more things to take apart, but let's get it clean. Okay, out of the cleaner. Doesn't that look nice? Does not look nice. Beautiful and shiny. All that gruck is gone. <sighs> so, working on stuff. Let me look over what I got now, and then we will start putting it together. Cool. Fun little test I like to do. So, I have your barrel all together on top of the jewel that I installed. That's nice. That's what we want to see. Well, I'm getting there. It's, uh, it's a little more involved than I was expecting. Uh, your train bridge, uh, your original train bridge had all kinds of issues with it. Uh, the Whoops, I'm in the wrong place. Hang on. Okay, train bridge had all kinds of things wrong with it. Um, the Upper bushing was bad, your center wheel upper um, bushing here for the center wheel, that was bad. Uh, what else? There was some other crazy stuff. This right here, this rotating, this this basically this post, this screw post that the intermediate wheel sits on, the reduction wheel, that's badly worn uh, to the point that, I mean, I could rebuild all this stuff. Uh, oh, also, your, um, the, the, Basically, it had a lot of problems, and at a certain point, it simply became easier to rebuild, and so, rather than rebuild it, to replace. So, we are, we are running. You can see the train ticking over there. So, um, let's see what happens. Okay, everybody's favorite moment. Let's drop that balance. Just one last check. Oh, I also had to replace your center wheel. That also was bad. Like, holy crap bad. Because um, a, a bunch of them, the moisture that had gotten in sometimes will tend to migrate to the middle. I have absolutely no idea why. Probably because it runs up and down the cannon pinion and the center wheel. And anyway, it gathered in the base of the center wheel where it's on the center wheel bridge and it rusted that whole thing. She's running. Okay. Let me power up the time grapher. Okay. Fifty-three. Okay, we're gonna find out together. All right. Uh, looks like I've got to do some adjustments. So I'm going to do that live, and I'll talk you and everyone else through that. Don't you stop it. Okay, so we've got some beat error and a lot of loss, but that's not a big deal. This isn't bad for starting out. Uh, so, I first thing I'm going to do is I am going to get rid of that beat error. At least I'm going to try to. Let's try it one way. Yeah. Okay, so I just adjusted the, the arm that holds the stud for the hairspring. Just a tiny, tiny amount. And because I'm moving it... To my left, I'm effectively shortening the hairspring, which means that the watch is going to be going faster, which is why the time loss is going away. And this is something you do real gingerly. 
Okay, look at that. So now we're down to 0, 0.0, which is good. Now I'm going to push up the accuracy. Again, real gingerly. There's no reason to go hell for leather. That was one touch. Okay, so that's a good place to sit. It is the end of my day. So I am going to cap this thing and I'm going to let it run in overnight and then tomorrow I will deal with assembly and um, the dial and all that other stuff. But I think that's a real good place to start. And uh, obviously I did something right. It's running. Uh, I want to see those numbers need to be significantly higher though. But it only literally just started running. So we'll see what happens. Okay, tomorrow morning. Okay, good morning. So the movement is running in. Uh, the numbers are fine. Hmm. Okay. Now we come to your dial. Two things are missing. The five that was here and also your date window, both gone. Don't know where they went, but we're going to need to replace them. Luckily, I have access to replacements. I have good dials of this type that have their markers that I can harvest from. And so that's what I'm going to do. I've got some haze on the surface here. I've seen worse. So we are going to give it a whirl. Okay, there's step one done, which is to I carefully cleaned the entire dial surface. So now it is shiny, which is important. Had a lot of haze all over it, but that's gone now. You'll notice also the loom looks whiter because we cleaned it. We, I, I cleaned it. So that's good. The dial surface is nice. Nice. The clear coat is good. Yeah, clear coat is good. Okay, so now we've got to replace these two missing pieces. So let me get that done. Okay. There is the five logo back in place. Now for the date window. And there is the date window in place. Now it's time to think about things called dial feet. Oh, fun. Okay. Well, wow. That took a lot of doing usual thing. When a watch goes through this much, you know, it has a long hard working history. There's always things you have to chase down and, and get going again. But all's well that ends well. Yeah, it just took a ridiculous amount of work uh, to get this done. I mean, when you have to when you have to get to the point of swapping on a train bridge and all the other repairs that had to be done, it's just it's just wild. But it's okay. All's well that ends well. Okay, let me cap it up. Let me be done. Oh, here it is, actually running. After I capped it up. Chugging along. Well, that was certainly something. It's it's really it's it's actually it's fun. It's fun seeing a challenge like this and being able to succeed and bring back a watch.
it looks better than it did when it came in. Uh, it's a handsome watch and it runs beautifully. You know what's crazy though, is I spent almost as much time, uh, one of the biggest chunks of time I had besides chasing down the gremlins and the movement was getting this bracelet clean. It was crazy. The stuff that was in there, I don't know what it was. It was like, it was cemented in there. Heat, uh, and, and heat and pressure and ultrasonic. Uh, in, in the end, I had to, I had to basically take the bracelet apart and clean the whole thing by hand with, with like dental picks because the stuff that was in there, whatever it was, it was glued to the stainless steel. It was amazing. But there it is. Um, all of your parts are in here. The bridge and the winding bridge and your old seals and your broken crystal and all that stuff. But we are good to go. I look forward to getting this watch back to you very, very much. I'm excited for you to, to have your father's watch back and to be able to wear it. In memory of him, that will be great. I am super happy. And also, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Above and beyond. Okay, see you later.